Hello and welcome to uh, Thermodynamics module, uh, lecture number 15. And we're continue, continuing our discussion about entropy. Um, uh, in fact, this is the essentially the last lecture. A very important lecture, however, because we're going to focus on the property entropy today. Uh, we Up to now, we sort of introduced the concepts, we came up with um, this relationship. And on the left hand side, we have the property uh, changing uh, uh, entropy as a property. And on the right hand side, we had sort of a transfer, which is a exchange entropy, which uh, shows that entropy transfers essentially through heat transfer at the boundary of the system. And within the system, we found we got a production term. And we can liken this to our energy equation where we've got the uh, Again, the property on the left hand side, change in property, energy. Um, and on the right hand side, we have our transfer terms, but no production terms, just transfers of work and heat. And we can write that also in divine through by the mass of the system. So in our law case, uh, du, uh, delta Q minus delta W. Well, and, and, and also for the entropy one as well. Um, we found that we could work entropy out uh, by looking at reversible processes by reducing this formula, taking the view that uh, for reversible processes, we have delta i of s identically zero equal to zero, and we have our ds in that case. Uh, delta QR over T uh, and we could use that but it was slightly abstract we had to imagine how to put the energy in reversibly which you know may not be happening in practice the process you're analyzing uh, invariably won't be putting energy in reversibly and so you had to construct a means by which uh, to put the energy in reversibly so that in fact you could come to the energy equation and put a little r on that delta q this is what you you, you imagine a slightly alternative process where energy was put in reversibly to figure out what the entropy change was it turns out you don't have to do this and the reason of course is that because entropy is a property and we know that it must be somehow uh, as a property and we've got a two property rule we know it's related to the properties uh, and this is the aspect I want to talk to about today. So we want to talk about the central, um, the central equation of thermodynamics. Uh, which may, sounds quite important, does it not? Um, and it's, what it's about is trying to... Uh, connect up entropy to the other properties. And how do we do it? How do we go about that? Well, we're going to go back to this equation. I'm going to look at per unit mass. It's more convenient to do that. Uh, specific terms. And again, look at our system. Uh, we've got our system. Uh, ascribed matter. And we're going to look at uh, energy being put in reversibly. So we're going to have our delta Q, delta QR. We're going to consider that. And we're going to have our work being displaced at work only for this case, delta d. And this is what we're going to do. So we imagine our system uh, and energy has been, so it's, everything's changing very slowly, of course, when you imagine this to be practically happening. Uh, Quasi-statically, certainly, everything's uniform, all the properties are defined, uh, just as we started on the course right at the beginning. Uh, these are the type of situations we were looking at. Now, we know, don't we, that uh, we've got our energy equation. We say, OK, our energy equation for this, uh, we're focusing on the intrinsic term. We're not worried about mechanical at this stage. Um, we're, and this is the our energy equation, which is this, of course. Right. Like that. And for this case, we find, OK, this case, it becomes du is equal to delta Q of R reversible minus delta omega G for our displacement work. 
But we have relationships for delta Q of R and delta W of D, do we not? We know that delta W of D is equal to PdV, yes? That's our displacement work. Uh, pressure times uh, a small increment of uh, or spe specific volume. Uh, delta Q of R, of course, uh, is equal to TDS. TDS. So delta Q of R is equal to TDS um, from well, this relationship essentially divided through by mass. That's there we go. That's the relationship. Now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to substitute in uh, into this relationship here, and let's see what we get. We get du uh, is equal to uh, TDS uh, minus PDV. Just by substituting that into there, this particular type of uh, operation that's taking place where we put an eat in reversibly uh, and also doing displacement work. Uh, I did mention uh, quite a while back that the differential form is quite good, uh, for, uh, quite useful for doing analytical studies because generally you can find relationships uh, between the properties in differential form and the, uh, and the transfer terms. So these are our transfer terms. Uh, and up till now we've not had a relationship for delta Q, we've always had one for the delta W. Uh, and we've done kind of, we can come up with formulas and different types of processes. We look at polytropic processes, didn't we? We can look at them again today. Um, so we were able to replace this by relation to the properties. But now we've got uh, delta Q. Uh, but for the when it's reversibly applied, we can do it. We can replace it, relate it to the properties, and it's TDS in this case. Uh, I just want to rearrange this. I'm just going to take that to the other side, and then we get this equation. Then that TDS is equal to uh, du plus pdv. This is our central equation of thermodynamics. This is the one I'm talking about uh, when I mention this. Um, and it's quite important. The reason it's important, even though I've assumed here that energy is supplied reversibly and, and we've got space at work, work only, when I, once I've got to this relationship, we can see that all it does is relate uh, properties. Uh, so therefore, it must be uh, universal in a sense. Uh, it's in fact a thermodynamic uh, an identity. This is what it is, a thermodynamic identity. So all it does is relate properties. It relates the entropy to the internal energy to the, to the pressure and so forth. Um, so it only depends on properties, uh, and this is how we this is how we work out. Um, this is how we uh, get entropy. How we relate it to our properties using this equation. In fact, uh, there's a different form of this as well. We can actually bring in H in if you want. H, you know, is equal to U plus PV. Yes. Uh, so DH. Uh, if I differentiate that, we get DU plus PdV uh, plus uh, VdP, yes? Just differentiating it, using our product rule for differentiation. The D is essentially a differential operator when it comes to, when it comes to properties. The property, these are functions, after all. And, you know, H is a function of other things. Uh, generally, temperature and pressure we tend to be related to. Uh, and here we've, here we've uh, so I can differentiate it. This is the point here, and this is just differentiating that. So we get the product rule there. Uh, but if you notice, I've got d, I've got um, du plus pdv there. So du plus pdv is actually equal to dh minus vdp. So we can see that du plus pdv is equal to dh minus vdp. And therefore, I can replace this thing, which is in this equation, by this thing. And that gives me another, another equation, which is dH minus VDP. Uh, so there we go. There's another 
form of the central equation of thermodynamics. Uh, in this case, we find the fact we're getting enthalpy in, involved in that. So that's just a simple manipulation, uh, nothing startling in that. Well, what I want to show now is how to use this equation to work out the properties uh, for entropy. You want to figure out what entropy is. Uh, and of course, as I said, we've got our two property rule. Uh, so if we, know, if, if we know two things, we expect to know the other, the other two properties, we can work at all the rest, essentially, for our simple systems. Um, so I'm going to apply them to, to liquids and gases. So let's just have a look at liquid first. So liquid, what do we know uh, about our liquid? Uh, generally for liquids, uh, a, rough a good approximation might be that dV is approximately zero, that you will find. If you try to change the liquid, it's not totally incompressible, yes? Uh, it's density, but uh, in thermodynamic sense, it's it's it, uh, the type of things we're interested in is large changes in temperatures where uh, in our processes. Uh, what happens with the volume then uh, uh, for a liquid is is insignificant in a way, uh, unless you change phase, then you will get gas produced, of course, vapor produced, and then you be just change quite soon. But for the liquid, for the liquid. Uh, in the liquid phase, then we might argue that. We also know that du is equal to C, well, it's CVD, it's CVDT, isn't it? Uh, but in fact, um, the difference between CV and CP in a, in a liquid is, is essentially the same, really. So we quite often we just write CDT. We drop the... Uh, we drop the, um, the CV as well because it's um, because of course what you're doing uh, essentially with a liquid you're holding volume constant in a way <laughs> uh, automatically because the volumes are changed and the volumes don't have a great deal of effect it's really temperature only that really affects the the C value so these generally are function of temperature uh, what I can do I can use this relationship and find that TDS then. Uh, is approx is equal to du, yes? So the TDS for a liquid is essentially equal to du, uh, which is equal to CDT. And I can divide through by T here, so we get ds is equal to C dt over T. Now it depends if C is a constant or not. Uh, quite often we just give it a constant value for the type of range. We, um, uh, for liquids, water, 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram K. That's a typical value I tend to use, um, which, you know. Uh, but in, in essence, what I need to do then is integrate this relationship. So it doesn't really matter if it's a function. If we know how it, we, we, we can come up with a relationship for this, a function, then fine, we integrate this thing. So integrating this thing between state one and state two, if you like, uh, is equal to the integral of uh, one to two of C dt over t. Yeah. Um, so then this side we get S2 minus S1, and that's equal to, well, it's equal to that. Unless I know C is a function of t, I can't really do much. Uh, but we could let's if we take it to be a constant, yes. Uh, well, it's it would it would that would just come down here essentially if, uh, until I knew what C is a function of T. We take it to a constant, we can work this out. Let's do it as a constant, it could be a mean value over the range. Uh, this is T1 to T2 to be precise about this. Uh, T over T, uh, this is equal to C, and it's a natural log, yes. We need to create one over something, it's the natural log. Uh, so this is the natural log of T2 over T1. You notice the arguments in any of these functions all have to be dimensionless. Um, uh, that is a, a quite, you know, the, the real numbers after all, so the dimensionless numbers. 
Uh, so you've got a you've got a if you've got a dimension in there, you're in trouble. It's something's wrong. So ratios of things tend to tend to come as arguments in all these functions. Anyway, C natural. That's a great formula, isn't it? So so what we've got S two, nice simple formula, uh, is equal to C natural log of T two over T one is the change in entropy then uh, for for a liquid, yeah, an incompressible liquid essentially. Um, we could have got it here. I could have done the same thing actually uh, with dH. Uh, the difference between H and U uh, in the liquid is insignificant. If you look at the steam tables and look at your H values, look at your U values when you when they provide them, you find in the liquid uh, for liquids there's uh, there's simply no difference really. Um, uh, because basically because the V, uh, well, why? Because the, the V is tiny, not 0 0.001, uh, yes, compared to the U, uh, this thing tends to be tiny. So you find that for a liquid, H is approximately U. This is uh, what you get. So there, that's, that's how you get the entropy. So it's easy, yes, very easy, nice, simple form. We know the thermodynamic temperatures here. We are thermodynamic, remember that. <laughs> Uh, big T here, then we can quite quickly get to the specific entropy there, uh, given that we know the C value. Uh, so we don't have to imagine some artificial, you know, way of eating things. In fact, one of the questions we did, I think we did it, we had a piston on, 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 um, lying on a liquid, and that we, uh, and I showed you how to use the delta, the delta QR approach. Um, but in fact, you didn't have to. This was the answer all along. Uh, even though the steps I, I did use to get to the, um, the central equation of thermodynamics theory, I've actually, I did actually use them in that question that we did on the uh, where the piston was sitting on top of a liquid. Um, so uh, they, there we go. Uh, but it just turns out to be quite a... Uh, gives a general answer that you can use rather than have to imagine all the time uh, ways of putting heat in reversibly, uh, in, in, you know, which is slightly conceptually difficult to do, especially when you're trying to solve some problem, you're trying to, you have to create another problem to solve it. Uh, but, and we don't have to, it turns out. It turns out we've got this lovely relationship uh, which is going to give us everything about entropy in terms of property by relating it to things that essentially that we can measure, yes? Uh, we tabulate these things, we can uh, calorimetry to work them out, really. We can do experiments to figure them out. Uh, they're variably tabulated. Uh, so what, given the C's here, uh, all we have to do is uh, note the temperatures uh, in this case. And for a liquid, we can see that actually by looking at it, S is a function of temperature only here. It's only dependent on the temperature, as we can see, so the temperature is quite important. If C varies with temperature, then I'm, I'd have to work out this integral. I'd have to, I can't jump to this step. Um, so that's um, so that's quite interesting. Um, notice that also I mentioned that we're interested in the difference of, of things uh, rather than the rather than the um, rather than the um, uh, the absolute values, you know. Uh, but you will find in the you will find in the t in the table, the same tables, for instance, that uh, you get specific values there. But what's again is happening? It's quite artificial. Entropy is being zero. It's zeroed at the triple point. Uh, you'll find if you look at the steam tables at the triple point, you'll find entropy zero. Of course, it's not zero there. Uh, far from it. Um, the best you could say about entropy is that you could zero it at absolute zero. Uh, in a sense, it's it's. It doesn't matter where the zero is because if you always look at the difference and the difference doesn't change, uh, if, you know, if you change the zero of one of them, you change the zero of the other, then the difference it makes no difference, does it really? So in any event, we're, we're going from one state to another uh, and the difference is all we really need. Uh, but as you can see, it's dependent on the temperature of the end states in that case. Okay, so that's, that's liquids done, as it turns out. <laughs> There's nothing more to do with the liquids. Uh, we can work out the entropy. It's a simple formula. Um, uh, you can look at it in the tables uh, also, of course. 
um, uh, but you can you can use your specific heat balance as well. So, so that's liquid. Uh, what about gas? Our ideal gases. Um, let's have a look at ideal gases then. So, so ideal. Generally, the gases I'm going to be looking at are per, well. You get simple formula for perfect gases. So we'll put ideal perfect gas or gases. So we have our formula, uh, PV equal RT. This is the one we've got. Um, different versions of it, but they're all the same. We, we looked at that. Uh, we tend to use this one. Um, perfect gas means that CV uh, and CP uh, a constant. That's what we mean by perfect. Uh, ideal gas, we're going to allow this to, uh, to, uh, to vary as a function of temperature generally, more predominantly, as a function of temperature. Uh, we also find, didn't we, that we have this relationship that CP minus CV is equal to R. That was, the, uh, that was what we um, found. And even if these were a function of temperature, this wasn't. That was definitely fixed. Um, so interestingly, the difference uh, between the C, P and C value is, is fixed uh, for an ideal gas. Um, so unlike the liquid, these two were essentially the same. You know, there's no change. Uh, incompressible liquid, of course, no change in volume, but gas, that's change in volume when, when, you, when you change the pressure, of course. So we can't, this is where it's coming from, you can't assume that these two are the same. These are definitely, these are definitely different uh, for a gas. Uh, so what do we do? Um, we've got two, two ways to go about it. We can look at this one. Uh, it's exactly the same when you look at this one. Uh, so what we do, we get our central equation there, TDS, uh, is equal to, well, du, uh, well, what do we have? We have du, let's put the things that we have, du is equal to cv dt, yes, for a gas, that's what we have for du, dh is equal to cp dt, that's the, so the change in enthalpy is got by this result, um, we're, we're always interested in enthalpy, aren't we? For a lot of our processes, you know, it's quite important. It turned out to be more important than you, as it turned out, um, for our for our processes. Um, uh, and we saw that when we analysed our adiabatic machines and all the rest. It was the enthalpy we were after uh, for those. Uh, but anyways, let me do the other one. Uh, PDV. Let's go for that. We got uh, CV. So C, V, D, T, but the U, the uh, plus P, D, V, uh, well, let's just put that in, plus P, D, V. I'm going to use this. Um, well, if I divide through by T, let's do that. We get D, S is equal to C, V, D, T over T. Plus um, P over T dV. Yeah. Just divide through by temperature throughout. Uh, it's an absolute scale, so we're not dividing through by zero. We don't have to worry about that. Um, and uh, well, if we look at this thing, then P over uh, T is equal to R over V, yes? So P over T. And this thing is equal to R over V. That's what that is. So let's get rid of that. Let's substitute that in. So we get this is equal to CV dt over T plus R dV over V. That's ds. ds is what we're after. We're trying to find ds. Now then, for a perfect gas, for a perfect gas, this will not be a function of temperature. Uh, it doesn't, if it's not, if it's not perfect, it is ideal, it doesn't matter, we can integrate this thing. So let's integrate this formula. Uh, what do we get? We integrate between state point one, state point two of ds, 
Uh, let's just write that in full then. We're going to do it as 1 to 2 CV to T over T. Uh, if, I'm being, if I'm being pedantic, I can be more precise about these limits. This, this is going to vary with temperature uh, between uh, 2 and 1. Yes, T, 2 and T1. We can do it like that if you want. Uh, and on this one, plus... R is constant, so we don't have to really worry about that. Uh, this is between V1 and V2, really. V over V is given by that. Well, let's take CVs. I can't do much more with this unless I know CV is a function of temperature. Uh, if I'm given that, I can work that integral out. But uh, if I take CV to be a constant, then uh, I can calculate that. Yeah, we've seen it already, in fact. So let's just work it out. It's S2 minus S1. S2 minus S1 equals CV, constant value or a mean value, if you like, natural log of T2 over T1 uh, plus R natural log of uh, V2 over V1. So for a gas, slightly more complicated formula, but not much more complicated really than the liquid. For the liquid, we only have this bit. Uh, essentially, because V2 and V1 were the same, natural log of 1 is 0, that's the reason. <laughs> so this would collapse back to the liquid one. Uh, so, and we can see, in fact, that entropy here, or the change in entropy, is uh, dependent on two two properties. So this is our two property rule in force, really. Uh, temperature and, and specific volume here. Um, so, uh, so that's quite a nice, that's quite a nice relationship. Uh, and again, so straightforward to work out the change in entropy. We know the temperature change between the endpoints and we know specific volume uh, changes. Uh, ah, we've got a characteristic gas. Uh, we know how to work that out. We can relate it to the universal, if necessary, a gas constant to get it, uh, as long as we know the uh, uh, the molar mass, essentially. Um, we can do that. Uh, maybe the mean molar mass if we're thinking about a, a mixture. But we can work out the R, uh, that's for sure. Uh, CV we'll generally be provided with. Uh, in the tables, it's been worked out for us. Okay, so that's that's how you do that. Not a big deal. Uh, we can do the other one as well. It's no difference. We can do uh, do it the other way. If we rather than using this equation, uh, if we use now a TDS, TDS is equal to um, dH minus VDP. But also we can use that. Uh, in this case, then we substitute in this. It looks exactly the same, to be honest. Uh, we get um, CP dt for dH uh, minus VDP. Let's put that again. Divide through by temperature. DS is equal to CP dt over T. You can see this is following the same route. Uh, minus uh, v over t, um, v over t dp. Well, from our gas law, let's have a look at v over p, uh, v over t, sorry. So v over t is equal to r over p, yes. So for the gas law, we have um, v over t is equal to r over p. So let's just rearrange our, our gas law up there. So I can get rid of this V over T and replace it by R over P, and we can see that we get C P T over T minus uh, R uh, D P over P in this case, and um, we can integrate. So let's just take this to be a constant. I think you can see how to do it. It's exactly the same thing, uh, and what we get is the answer. Let me put the answer in S two. Minus S1 is equal to Cp natural log of T2 over T1 minus, in this case, we've got a minus sign there, R 
uh, natural log of P2, P1, yeah, so that's going to be a slightly different uh, thing. Um, and again, the two probability rule is in force. It's telling if I knew, so again, it's telling me if I knew the pressures at the end rather than the specific volumes, uh, you could, uh, you could, um, yeah, you could uh, work out what the change in entropy is for, for this case. Um, so, anyways, that's uh, that's essentially how you do it. That's how you work it out. You work out the properties uh, for um, uh, for your processes. Uh, so it's, it is fairly straightforward doing this way, rather than having to think quite obscure ways of, of trying to <laughs> try to apply heat and do reversible things. Uh, using the properties is the is, is the way to work out entropy changes, and it's uh, you know, uh, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hardly magical. It's it's fairly straightforward. These are very very reasonable, and very simple formulae uh, to work them out. Yeah, and you can derive them in. You know, I, I barely remember them. Uh, I never try to. You can derive them almost, you know, in a few moments. Um, uh, well, what else do we need to do? We uh, I think the last thing we need to do is just look at some uh, um, important processes. Uh, we were talking about uh, was well, yeah, a couple of things. I suppose um, we, we were talking about uh, the isentropic uh, processes, weren't we? That was something we, we, we were going to have a look at. Uh, so yeah, let's let's do that then. So so I want to look at the t go back to the TS diagram. That's we can look at some curves on there. Uh, that's that would be interesting just to. To look again, since now we know that we've got entropy, um, you know, we know how it's related to the things. It's, uh, we can we can do that for our polytropic processes that we uh, that we were talking about uh, right at the beginning when we looked at work, quite important process, so isochoric, isobaric, isothermal process, all type of thing. Uh, um, but also is the uh, uh, isentropic process. Um, so let's you know, let's look at isentropic. Yes. So isentropic process. Constant entropy. What does it? Uh, um, and what we like to know is what is the relationship between the uh, what relationship we get for an isentropic process. Uh, we have gamma, and we mentioned gamma. Gamma is equal to Cp over Cv. That was, uh, and you may recall, I uh, suggested that isentropic process is one of our uh, polytropic process. Yeah, we did say that it was this. We said it was Pv to the gamma is equal to a constant. I think this is what we said. This is what, I, this is what we meant by a, um, uh, an isentropic process. Um, so how do we know that? Uh, well, let's go back to there's loads of ways to derive this, but uh, let's go back to um, uh, central equation of thermodynamics. So TDS is equal to du uh, plus PDB. Let's do this one. It doesn't matter which one we use uh, uh, in this case. And again, we go on our, we've got our added gas PV equals RT, of course. And we've got du uh, is equal to cv uh, dt. This is what we've got uh, for, for that. Um, so for isentropic, we have ds is equal to zero. This is the thing we have, don't we? There's no change in entropy. That's what we mean by isentropic. No change in entropy. Uh, we can set ds is equal to, uh, equal to zero. Uh, so this left hand vanishes. Let's so we get zero is equal to du, which we've got C V D T uh the T plus uh, uh P well well in fact it's probably useful to uh, uh we're gonna have to integrate this thing so uh, it's probably useful to divide through by t, in fact. Uh, well, let's just do it. I'll just leave it as it is. We'll do that anyway. PV uh, 
we've got to substitute in there, is it? Uh, we've got R, T, over V, this is what we've got. Uh, so if I leave it like that, just for a second, and we'll sort it out in a second. T, substitute in then for P, which is R, T, R, T, uh, dv over v, this is what we have. Uh, it's given by that result. Um, R, remember, was equal to uh, Cp minus Cv, that's what we have for R, that was one thing we had. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide through, it's zero on this side, so I can divide through wherever I like, long as it's non-zero, yeah? So I'm going to divide through by Cv, uh, and I'm also going to divide through by t, uh, to get rid of this t, yes? So that's equal to zero. So divide through by Cv uh, and t. So dividing through by Cv and t, uh, on this thing we get dt over t, yeah? That's what we get for that thing. Dividing through by Cv and t. t cancels there, we get r over Cv. r over Cv. Uh, is equal to one, uh, sorry, gamma minus one, yeah. So I'll, if I divide this by CV, CV, get CP over CV, which is uh, that, and, and that. So we get plus uh, gamma minus one uh, dV over V. This is what we get. Zero is equal to that, yes? Um, so, what do we do next? Uh, so, we simplified it. Uh, we can integrate it, I suppose. I've got it in the form that I can integrate it. Um, is a, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that then. So, integrating it, we get the natural log. Well, yes, okay. Um, yes, okay, okay, let's do that. It's, natural, it's a natural log. If we integrate it between two states, we get the natural log of T2 over T1 uh, plus gamma minus 1, uh, and this is the natural log of V over V2 over V1, yes. Um, that's equal to uh, zero. Um, and of course, with property of natural logs, you can bring the gamma to minus one in there, can't you? So we get natural log, uh, natural log of uh, T2 over T1 plus uh, the natural log of uh, V2 over V1. V2, V2 down here. Uh, to the gamma minus one, that's, uh, that's one thing. Uh, that's equal to zero. Again, properties of logs, I can, I can, I can uh, write this like this, I suppose. Natural log of T2 over T1 V uh, V to the Two gamma minus one over v one gamma minus one uh, is equal to zero. Maybe this wasn't the best way to do it. I don't know. Well, uh, and we can see that this thing then natural log of something equal to zero. This is one. Yes. So it's telling me what's on the top. What's on the top and the bottom. For arbitrary v2 and v1s, of course, uh, uh, they're the same. So that implies that uh, t2 uh, v2 to the gamma minus 1 is equal to t1 v1 to the gamma minus 1, yes. Alternative written, uh, tv to the gamma minus 1 is equal to a constant. So there we go, that's uh, <laughs> slightly longer than I thought that, but anyway, uh, there we are, that's a nice simple formula, TV uh, to the gamma minus one is a constant. This was actually one of our polytropic ones, um, we, we were able to get to uh, 
uh, using this formula, we actually got to this formula uh, for, uh, you may recall, for the gas law. Um, and the, you can see it because here we've got PV, uh, well, we can go both ways, but PV, PV to the gamma minus, so the gamma was obviously P, P, uh, V to the V gamma minus one. Yeah, that was basically, that's the same thing. PV is equal to RT. Uh, that's equal to constant, we're saying. Uh, substitute for RT. This gives me T to the V gamma minus one is equal to a constant. So this process, the polytropic process, uh, given by this formula is exactly the same exactly the same uh, um, as this as this relationship it's the same it's just okay i've changed the constant it doesn't matter so this this relationship is the same as that one for an ideal gas um and that's what we mean by isotropic process so this is this is the isotropic but no entropy change in this process so the pressure and speaking of volume in your in your process varies according to this rule then you're guaranteed to have no entropy change. Or alternatively, it would be this rule, yes. Uh, they're both the same as it turns out for an, for an ideal gas. We're going through equilibrium states, yes. Um, and of course, there's another one, isn't there? You can you can get this uh, in terms of, we've got temperature V, pressure and V, we can get uh, temperature and P. It can't be uh, from that relationship as well. Um, and we've done it already for the polytropic process, yes. Um, so there's no there's no big deal uh, about that. Uh, well, you can do it. You just what do you do? You can take one over gamma to the other side, can't you? So you can go p one over gamma uh, v uh, is equal to a constant. That's, and then you can bring a P. I tend what I tend to do is I'll try to get a PV in some in the thing. Um, um, uh, yeah, so P to the gamma one over gamma minus one PV. Then that would do that uh, equal to a constant and PV replace that by RT. Then gives me uh, P. Uh, to the well, you can write this as one minus uh, one minus gamma over gamma uh, and t then equals a constant. So that's a slightly that's the other way of writing this. In that case, you've got p and t related, t and v related, and p and v related. Uh, in that case, so these are the, the forms you can have. Well, all these are just isentropic processes, the same process actually, but uh, in different forms, uh, which give zero, uh, which gives zero um, entropy, so no change in entropy in that case. Uh, okay, we've got the last thing I want to do then. So that's the isentropic process. The last thing I want to do is have a look at, so I'll go back to our uh, TS diagram. Uh, again, and just look at some of the processes there. Uh, uh, now that we know how entropy behaves, um, we can uh, we can uh, plot some of these curves, can't we? So a TS state diagram. TS state diagram. Uh, what type of processes? So these are our polytropic processes, yes. So we had uh, PV to the, we had uh, polytropic processes. Basically, and that was PV to the N was equal to a constant. Yes, and uh, uh, so we had some important processes there, so well, the first one, I suppose, one of the, if you look at our TS diagram, uh, some of them are trivial. So T, TS diagram, and some of them we were, we were talking about the other day, the isothermal one, um, when we've got a gas, um, you know, we've got PV, PV equals RT. 
Uh, and then, of course, um, if n is equal to 1 uh, and, uh, and t is a constant, then uh, that was, that's what we found, wasn't it? Uh, so PV equal to a constant um, was the same for a gas is equal to temperature equal to a constant. Yeah, so that's a constant, so that must be. And of course, that, that process uh, was very simple on a TS diagram, wasn't it? For one to two, uh, we could find just a horizontal line. Um, that, was, that was quite, a, quite an important process. As uh, and also, we found, didn't we, that the area under the TS diagram was uh, uh, was important. If we were putting heat in reversibly in, in our process, we, we, the, the amount of energy, heat energy transferred was the area under the graph. So these diagrams uh, are quite important. Uh, the other one, I suppose, is coming horizontal. No, not horizontal, vertical. <laughs> uh, so that is... Uh, you know, they can go in either direction. Uh, you know, um, this is constant temperature, increase in entropy, but I can decrease entropy and I can go uh, increase temperature or decrease temperature doesn't, doesn't really matter. So this this one, of course, this one essentially dt is equal to zero. Yeah? Uh, no change in temperature. This one is ds equal to zero. ds equal to zero. Uh, and for this one, so for TDT equal to zero for an ideal gas, uh, this for an ideal gas, uh, we get a PV equal to a constant. This is what we're saying. Uh, for an ideal gas, that's uh, so if I went on to my PV, uh, if I did a PV state diagram, I would have to plot this curve. Yes. Uh, for this one, um, well, we've just done it, haven't we? P, ds equal to zero, isentropic. We know now that PV to the gamma equals a constant. So that is the... So if I went on my PV diagram, I'd have to plot this curve. Yes, for a different gamma. Uh, for the different ratios of uh, CP and CV in that case. Um, the other, the other process that we, we looked at, I think, was uh, was um, isobaric, yes, isobaric process, um, which was got by uh, setting n equal to zero in this in this case. So the isobaric process, um, uh, and how do we how do we uh, how do we uh, so isobaric is a uh, of course, we had, um, well, we had this, didn't we? Let's have a look at it. We'll, go, we'll just derive it again, might as well. dH minus VDP. This is the one you'd probably plump for. So for an isobaric process, uh, what would you do? You'd set um, this thing to zero, wouldn't it? DP would be equal to zero. Uh, and that, of course, is equal then to CP dT. Uh, and, um, and clearly, therefore, so, oops, oops, well, I missed the T up there. <laughs> uh, so TDS, uh, the, that was our formula. Divide through by the T, we find a nice simple relationship in that case. So CP, we're doing constant CP for the perfect gases here. So we'll do T over T. Um, and the entropy then, um, S2, S2 minus S1 is equal to CP natural log of uh, T2 over T1. This is what we found, wasn't it? Uh, or alternatively, we can write it as T2 over T1 is equal to S2 minus S1 over CP uh, exponential. Yes. Just inverting the natural log with an exponential. Take that to the other side, take exponential of both sides. Um, so this is the curve that um, that you'd have to draw uh, for an isobaric for an isobaric process. Yes, so an exponential curve. Uh, well, how does that go? Uh, T T S. It's something like this, isn't it? You get a curve like that, something like that. One to two. Uh, so that would be my T one. That would be my. T2 
S1, uh, S2. Yes, for something like that, uh, an exponential curve, that's what exponential increasing curve um, given, by, given by this expression. Uh, as far as the PV diagram would be concerned, well, P was a constant, so isobaric, so this is my isobaric, yes, so isobaric, uh, isobaric, uh, P equal to a constant, so a nice, on the, on the PV diagram, nice easy curve, uh, horizontal line, uh, no problem there, uh, but on the uh, TS diagram, we'd, uh, we'd have to, we get a slightly different curve, given by uh, this relationship, yes. The other one was isochoric, I think, that's the other one we haven't done. Isochoric process. Um, so, uh, and polytropic, put a, put a this was, um, well, infinity, yes. We, we rearranged the polytropic and said, okay, we can write this as P one over NV equal to a constant. Yeah, and then we basically, I want to get rid of the p, so we set n uh, to infinity. That makes that zero, and that makes that one. And then we've got v equal to a constant. Yes, so isochoric v equal to a constant. Uh, what we've got, we've got n goes to infinity basically uh, for that. And for the PV diagram, of course, it's just a vertical line. Yes, uh, for isochoric, well, what we want in this case is TDS is equal to du plus uh, uh, pdv, yes. That's the one you'd go for because the v is zero after all, that's what you mean by uh, isochoric, no change in volume. This thing then is cv dt, and you probably can see what I'll do it, divided through by the t, ds is equal to um, cv dt over t, uh, and therefore s2, minus S1 is equal to CV natural log T2 over T1. Alternatively written, exactly the same as this thing, T2 minus T1 uh, is equal to uh, the exponential of uh, S2 minus S1 over CV. So we end up with that relationship. Uh, we end up with that relationship uh, as far as the CV is concerned. We know that uh, CP is bigger than CV. Uh, yes, so it's a smaller number. Uh, so essentially, uh, for a change in ent entropy, it makes this thing bigger than that one, wouldn't it? So the same change divided through by a smaller number. The curve tends to be a bit steeper. So, well, uh, just do it there, TS you end up with slightly steeper curves. This is what you end up with uh, going from one to two in a similar thing. So you end up with a slightly steeper, a slightly steeper um, um, uh, curve, basically, uh, for, for, this, curve, for this, this one. But it's essentially the same thing. Yeah? You've just got a different value. So this is isochoric. This is what you get when you do an isochoric process. So on our PV diagram, it's a vertical line. Uh, but on our TS diagram, we get, we get a curve following an exponential curve. Um, I'm running out of time now. Uh, well, in a sense, this is all I really want to say. Um, I, I do hope you've enjoyed the course. Um, uh, of course, uh, there's videos uh, also for work problems, and there's trial sheets that you've got to do. You've got your assignments to do. Um, or, 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 Possibly by this time you've done them. It depends when you look at this video. Uh, well, uh, well, as I say, I hope you enjoy the course. And with that, I'll say bye-bye.